Welcome back. You're still tuned into markets today. Let's go to the rest of the headlines that we are tracking for you. Uh, to the fourth headline now, Gale has gained uh, some ground after India's all-sector regulator PNGRB hiked average tariff by 45%. This is an average increase ac across the pipelines, the integrated pipeline tariff that is, and it is largely in line with expectations. So when uh, this news really came out, the stock surged to the day's high up around 3%. It came off from the highs but closed in the green. Now the new integrated natural gas tariff will be at 58.61 per, uh, rupees per MMBTU. This is on a gross uh, basis. And this uh, is a 45% increase versus the current, that is the FY23 tariffs and 38% hike versus FY22 tariffs. So there definitely has been an increase. Now remember, earlier PNGRB had said that they will be hiking tariffs uh, to the tune of uh, $60.9 per uh, 60 rupees per MMBTU. Gale had asked for a 70% hike. The street knew that, okay, 70% hike will not come about. But the expectation was that it will be between 40 to 50% as far as tariff hike is concerned. Uh, last week, in anticipation of this tariff hike, CLS had come out with a note where they said uh, that they are modeling a 40% hike, while 52% hike, which actually PNGRB had suggested, would boost EPS by 7%. Uh, the street expected 7 to 12 percent in terms of an EPS increase because of the tariff height, and this would uh, lead to a re rating for the utility segment of Gale. So, definite uh, positive that has come about for Gale, uh, and that's why the stock will continue to remain in focus. These tariffs kick in from 1st of April. That is about Gale, but uh, let's talk about Bandhan Bank zoomed over 4% after receiving binding bids totaling 740 crore rupees for stressed assets worth nearly 5,000 crore rupees. The bank's board has approved the sale of stressed assets to an asset reconstruction company. Moreover, the bank has also made a new senior executive appointment. Abhishek Kothari joins us with all those details. You know, the stress has reduced in the balance sheet and you have a new appointment of uh, executive director coming in. So, board has approved the sell-off of, uh, you know, 2,614 crores. Uh, this is a return of portfolio, uh, a little more than 28% of return of portfolio in last few quarters and about 2,316 crores, which forms about 33.3% of gross NPS, uh, which will be sold to ARC or Asset Reconstruction Company. So, bank has received a binding bid of 369 crore for the return of portfolio and about 371 crore for the NPA on security risk basis. Uh, so if you take a look at the recovery rate, that's on the stronger side for 14 point one percent for the return of portfolio and about 16 percent uh, for the NPS being sold to ARC. Uh, this is much better than the single digit uh, returns that you have seen for other NPS being sold by MFI players. So they have also appointed uh, Ratan Kumar Kesh as executive director for three years. He has joined from uh, Access Bank. He was earlier in Access Bank wherein he joined in, in 2019 and has handled retail operations across liabilities, asset, card, etc. Back to you. In fact, we caught up with the MD and CEO of Bandhan Bank, Chandrasekhar Ghosh, earlier today and he said that the recent exits in the bank have not caused any impact. Also added that the bank has not heard from investors on the issue of stake sale. Listen in. Uh, if you see that the bank have been started in a eight years before and last eight years we have been journey very good way on that with our senior team member, which we have been taken from different banks. And the one, two people have been also changed their job. So it is a part of this, the business. After that, also business have been come to this position is a two lakh crores at the board. We have been very confident on that. The senior management is a very strong. And whatever sometimes we listen, it is a new one. I cannot comment on this new one. Okay, the stock was high by 4% in trade today. Moving on to the fifth headline now, gold prices corrected for the second straight day as Treasury yields jumped, easing worries of a banking crisis. Heavy profit-taking and less risk aversion also weighed on prices. Manisha Gupta is here with all those details. Manisha. Well, yes, there is lesser of risk aversion as we saw in the markets today and that has let the safe haven, which is gold, come off its all-time highs that we saw in this week itself in the Indian markets at around uh, 60,450 rupees. So from those kind of levels to 58,500, it clearly has been 2,000 rupees shaved off from the gold's all-time highs in the Indian markets. For the international markets, we saw a one-year high at $2,009 per ounce. From there, we've seen 1940. So nearly $70 have come off in just a uh, 
uh, or two trading sessions in case of international markets as well. Well, this is happening because you are looking at heavy profit taking coming in for gold after we saw one way rally happen here. And as I said, there is lesser risk aversion. We've seen the equity markets gain up. The treasury yields also have jumped up. And then it is also about the easing worries in the banking crisis, which has taken the gold prices lower. Uh, the good thing is that because of gold prices coming off its highs, there is physical and ETF buying in India and globally that the markets have recorded. The U.S. Fed decision is what the street is clearly awaiting for right now. And there is nearly 13.8% pro probability that it would stay pat and there wouldn't be an interest rate hike. And there is a huge 86.4% possibility that we might look at 25 basis point of a rate hike coming in for uh, the U.S. Fed. There is no possibility of 50 basis point rate hike, but it clearly would be about the U.S. Fed guidance going forward that could be moving the markets. And for the gold, the industry says that it could be $50 either ways, depending on what the U.S. Fed does and say today in the evening. Manisha, thank you so much for joining us. That's all about the gold prices and how they are seeing a continuous surge. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of Markets Today. Stay tuned uh, for more updates on CNBC TV 18.